On March 17, 2021, members of Muso del Horror traveled to a derelict building in an unknown city in Mexico, live streaming the entire adventure. Just after beginning their investigation, the group ventures to the side of the building. As they come to some stairs on the side, a faint growl can be heard on the audio. <laughs> None of the participants noticed it during filming, but viewers were quick to point it out in the comments. It sounds either like a growl or an attempt to whisper something, but it is difficult to determine what. From here, they enter the building, which is hollowed out and falling apart. Nothing of note happens until just after the 40 minute mark of the stream. A high pitched noise can be heard, almost like a screech or another hiss, albeit longer than the previous one heard. It's also possible that this was the sound of something rubbing against another object, similar to metal rubbing against metal. The last speculation is it could be someone breathing in, possibly one of the explorers, although nobody else seems to be around except Alfondo holding the camera, and he starts speaking before the sound goes away. Si está bien la distancia, todo está bien. The team decides to conduct a Ouija board session, which is not recommended for amateur explorers, by the way, to see if they can get any activity. Not long after starting, a very faint voice can be heard on the audio. It sounds as if there are words in there, but it is almost impossible to make out. The voice can be heard speaking, over questions being asked, could someone be trying to communicate? Soon they get an answer of yes on the board after being asked a question, and the board remains active for some time. When asked if it is a man, it responds no. Throughout the session, dogs can be heard barking wildly in the background. The dogs were rather quiet prior to starting the Ouija board and now they are nearly frantic. Animals are known to be sensitive of the paranormal. Could they be distressed at what the team is doing? Or is there another explanation? In the midst of the session, by far the most bizarre event happens. Alfondo's attention is called away to a strange light manifesting on the opposite side of the building from where they are. In the opposite corner, it appears as if a flame has been lit, flickering. Suspicious others might be in the building. They call out and make their way to the area. One of the team members shows a few photos she took, and along with the glow of a fire, the windows make it appear to be daylight outside. However, the video camera always showed the windows to be dark. Furthermore, the photo camera was not using a flash, meaning it could not be a reflection. What could this mean? They decide to do a spear a box session and instantly, the sounds the box makes sound straight out of a horror movie itself. While it is most likely caused by the rapid switching through radio frequencies, we have never heard another session sound as terrifying as this. Alfondo walks with the device to the other end of the building and throughout hears some disturbing sounds. First what sounds like someone wailing in distress. The most disturbing capture of the night is what sounds like a child crying out in fear or pain. It's hard to imagine what could have happened at the location, as it appears some manner of horrors still reside there, endlessly crying out in the afterlife. Basements are where hidden secrets are kept in the dark, old memories and keepsakes of things that are too scary for the surface and would get you some strange looks. Basements often serve as a place for troubled minds to explore the scariest facets of the human imagination. A YouTuber named Jonathan Wickholm goes exploring the basement of his girlfriend's apartment building because it's creepy and old and he suspects scary stuff is down there. He's not wrong. So James agreed, the moment you walk in this room, it's 
and creepy. It makes no sense. Over by James, there's a random stool and a microwave that, is it plugged in? No, okay, so it gets weirder. In the center of the room is a large cedar wood box. On the outside is a door that unlocks only from the outside. Sticking out the top of the mysterious nondescript box is a pipe for giving someone air. And when he opens it, this is what it is. It is a small room with chairs. It's nothing else. He finds a small hidden room where someone can be kept secret down here without anyone going down to find them for a long time. What was being kept down here? I fear I already know the answer. James, look at this. James, look at this. There's scratch marks. There are legit scratch marks. There are f***ing scratch marks. Drilled into the ceiling of the secret prison place are holes that look like they were put there for further ventilation. Slashed across these holes are marks that do resemble human nails raking themselves across the surface again and again. So that the fresh air could still come in, but you couldn't get your hand up there. You can reach out and signal to people right there. Let's recap. Thus far, he's found a box that could be meant for holding people. Outside of this box is a stool where someone could sit down and enjoy listening to their helpless screaming and scratching sounds for hours. Ignorance is bliss, and sometimes it's best that certain things remain invisible to the human eye. Posted to the Chills Narrator subreddit by Miss Doolittle Tex. This video was taken at the Haunted Queen Anne Hotel in San Francisco. Originally posted on YouTube in March of 2020, Tex writes, I have been listening to creepy stories and been watching YouTube videos about ghost investigations and experiences since they existed, which resulted in me paying more attention to my surroundings, heightening my awareness. The Queen Anne Hotel has some history. Located on Sutter Street in San Francisco, initially built as a girls' boarding school, the Queen Anne Hotel is said to be haunted by the former headmistress, Mary Lake. Her office at room 410 is believed to be the most haunted room in the building. The uploader of the video booked this room to stay in overnight. In preparation for the stay, she bought a Fleur thermal cam for her iPhone. She duly notes that the hotel is charming as heck and she didn't feel anything particularly unsettling while there. That is, until she thermal cammed room 410. She tested out her thermal cam on her husband, on electrical sockets, water lines, and other hot and cold spots. Then she entered the bathroom. Pointing her thermal cam towards the half-closed shower curtain, she started to see a figure in the thermal footage next to her that she believed appeared from behind the curtain. As you can see, there is her own thermal image in its reflection, and not too far away right beside it, another full-sized figure. Could it be headmistress Mary Lake herself? When going through pictures she took of the room, the uploader also discovered this creepy face in the wallpaper. Do you see it? It's almost like the room is watching you. Mr. Hammer is a fearless ghost hunter from Saudi Arabia who is always charging forward no matter how scary things get while exploring haunted abandoned places. He's exploring abandoned houses like usual when he begins to feel like he's being followed. Something's different about this urban exploration. He's not unsure if it's a paranormal encounter he's having or if a stranger is messing with him. Let's try to make sense of the scary stuff and creepy things happening in this bizarre video. The mysterious figure is what has been following him since he was first outside of the abandoned building. <laughs> Ironically, a ghost sighting is what Mr. Hammer's after, but a ghost sighting is what he misses in real life. <laughs> Somehow, he does not see a creepy man looking at him from the doorway. Oh well, at least he caught it on tape for our analysis. 
I think this is more likely a friend of his pretending to make paranormal things happen instead of a real ghost sighting caught on camera. Almost anyone would have seen that mysterious figure in the doorway, especially if they were already on high alert. Flickering lights are one thing, but a switch visibly turning off of its own accord? That's a whole other story. Posted to the paranormal subreddit by Nutzack, the redditor writes about this unexplained encounter that his brother caught on camera. According to Nutzack, his brother was home alone, likely checking on his family's dog Oscar, when suddenly the hallway lights started doing their own thing. He recorded the incident as it continued, and this is what he captured. Nutzack states that he lived in the house for two years and has always felt strange vibes but never seen anything firsthand. He writes, Now after watching the video countless times, I am stumped and believe there is something beyond our knowledge happening here. Two switches control this hallway light. Both you can see in the video. One is right next to the guy and the other is at the end of the hallway on the left. According to Nutzack, you can see the light switch nearby turn about halfway down, which, as the Redditor writes, would be impossible to recreate. Next, it flicks off entirely, turning the hallway light off. This one you can see as clear as day. Some are all in with the paranormal theory, but there's always a skeptic among us. And this time it's Slick Air who states, a combination of loose wiring and a faulty switch can cause this. Others in the thread suggest not even faulty switches can flip off of their own accord. What do you choose to believe? On March 6th of 2015, CCTV video at a bus stop shows a woman walking down Wellington Street in England late at night from a pub. Behind her walks a man who she later describes as having black hair and in his early 20s. The man starts a far distance away but quickly gains on her without arousing suspicion. By the time they are out of camera, he is practically right behind her, and yet he remains quiet enough not to get her attention, like he's done this many times before. It's a well-lit street, but that doesn't stop him from making his move. She never turns around and doesn't stand a chance against him. I can't go into detail about what happens next. She survived, but she will never be the same emotionally again from the traumatic events that occurred. The same man is also responsible for committing similar acts on an 18-year-old girl a month prior to this video. I don't think he was ever caught, and no doubt he will continue to do the same thing until he is brought to justice. This happened years ago, so who knows how many others he has done this to in the time since. There is a £5,000 reward for anybody who can help police. The CCTV video is grainy and it happened a long time ago, but hopefully somebody recognizes a clothing article or something. Anything to help catch this maniac before he strikes again. Class is still in session at this abandoned school. Published by Scary and Mysterious Stuff in April of 2022, this ghost hunter set out to explore the school, which is said to be haunted by the ghost of a student who is found lifeless there. After entering the school, he hears the haunting before he sees it. A chair squeals across the ground as it's being dragged by something unseen. When the chair slows to a stop, he hears another noise. Going to investigate, he finds a swing set in action. Though no one is in the seats, same goes for a second swing set nearby. As he continues around the playground, he hears another noise. He races back to the school and peers inside the broken screens of the classroom windows. That's when he sees this upon entering the room. This upsetting sight scares him enough to leave this place. Unlike the ghosts of past students, who it appears have never left alone at night in an empty school, nothing to fear, right? Wrong. Posted to the ghosts subreddit by Bartholomew Blackwell, the Redditor states that he was working solo in a school that was shut down and empty when he heard a sound in the hallway. <laughs> 
the power had been put out by a storm the previous night, and with his flashlight on, he started recording. What he heard was haunting. In the dark school hallway, you can hear a faint wailing. It doesn't sound like anything recognizable, although Blackwell noted that to him, it sounded like a group crying. Some in the comments say that perhaps it's wind, or maybe even the Doppler effect of a vehicle of some kind, moving past the school at high speed, noting that he too thinks it could be the wind heightened by a lack of power supply noise. Gus2155 admits, as someone who is a custodian at a high school, I've heard some strange noises, but nothing like that. Some think it could be a hive of zombies, others suggest a water pipe is running, or a backup generator might be starting up. At least we know Blackwell got out alive. Thank you so much for getting me to 30,000 subscribers here on my Clips channel. If you want to support, please press that subscribe button. Let's get to 40,000 subscribers next. Thank you.